Welcome to our next lecture in the series on condensed matter theory. In this lecture, I want to talk about the Dyson equation. And the Dyson equation is a very powerful equation where we can relate Green's functions to each other, which allows us to calculate Green's functions even in cases where we are not able to trivially diagonalize the Hamiltonian. In many cases, we'll find that our Hamiltonian, which is hard to diagonalize, can be written as an Hamiltonian that is much simpler, plus an Hamiltonian that makes it hard. Um, the easiest or the most common example is the case of Coulomb interaction, where H0 can be, for example, the Hartree-Fock Hamiltonian, and then H1 is the correction to that where you now explicitly include the Coulomb interaction. But there are other examples. Um, H0 can be a perfectly periodic Hamiltonian, and H1 can be an impurity that sits inside this Hamiltonian, making your Hamiltonian no longer perfectly periodic. Then, of course, H0 we can solve by a Fourier transform, but the total Hamiltonian will be much harder to solve. So we look at systems where calculating the Green's operator for a full system, which is 1 over omega minus the Hamiltonian plus a small imaginary part, is hard. But calculating the Green's operator for H0 minus H0 plus I0 plus is doable. So let's see how we can calculate the full Green's function when we know the bare Green's function of G0. So our Green's operator inverted is given as omega minus the Hamiltonian plus a small imaginary part, which is equal to omega minus H0 plus your small imaginary part minus H1 which is nothing else as the G0 minus 1 minus H1. Now in order to come back to our Green's operators instead of inverses of our operators, we're going to multiply with the Green's operator. And now of course we have to realize that these operators don't commute, so we're going to multiply from the right. You can equally well multiply from the left and then later on do it in the other way. You'll get similar equations. But if you multiply from the right, we have g times g minus 1 or g minus 1 times g, which is 1, g0 minus 1 times g of omega minus h1 g of omega. And in the next step, we're going to multiply with g0 of omega from the left. That gives us g0 of omega times 1 is g0, g0 times g0 minus 1 is just 1. So our bare Green's function is equal to the full Green's function. And now we have the bare Green's function g0 times the Hamiltonian times the full Green's function, where we call G0 the bare Green's function and G the full Green's function. Now here we have G0 is equal and we actually want to know what our full Green's function is. And it is equal to G0 plus G0 H1 G. And I should be careful because these are not yet Green's functions, these are the Green's operators. So this is on the operator level. Now we want to go from the operator level to the function level. So what we're actually interested in is the Green's function where we create a particle in quantum state tau prime, annihilated in state tau. 
So we have our vacuum. We create a particle in tau prime, and then we look at the expectation value of our Green's operator. Well, just by the Dyson equations for the operators, this is zero, a tau g0 of omega, a dagger tau prime zero. And by our assumptions, this was something we could calculate, plus zero, a tau, g0, h1, g of omega, a dagger tau prime. So now we create a particle in the state tau prime. We have our Green's operator, we have our Hamiltonian, we have our bare Green's operator, and then we elevate our particle. So that doesn't really look like a simplification, but it more looks like something that is more complex than we had before. Now, in order to simplify this, we can put in two identities. We first have here our bare greens function, and then we put in two identities, both here and there, where we sum over two quantum states, zero a tau g zero of omega, and now our identity, a dagger tau double out of the vacuum, tau double, h1 tau triple times a tau triple where of course this and this are two times your identity operators times g zero uh, full Green's function, g of omega a dagger tau prime out of the vacuum. So what we have is that our full Green's function, g tau tau prime of omega, is equal to the bare Green's function without h1, plus a sum over two intermediate states, given by the quantum numbers tau double prime and tau triple prime, g0 tau tau double prime of omega tau double prime h1 tau triple prime g tau triple tau prime of omega. So the Propagation of a particle from quantum state tau prime to tau in an Hamiltonian that is given by h0 plus h1 can be seen as the propagation for a system that is just given by h0 from tau prime to tau plus the propagation from tau prime to tau triple prime by your full Green's operator or your dynamics governed by the full Hamiltonian then a scattering by h1 from state tau triple prime to tau double prime, and then a propagation by the bare Green's function from tau double prime to tau. So you still go from tau prime to tau, but via an intermediate state tau triple prime, where you can scatter by the Hamiltonian to tau double prime. And you have to sum over all possible paths that you can take. Now, of course, instead of doing this once, we now here have the full Green's function again, and we can insert the Dyson equation, such that we get a series, tau prime of omega, plus tau double, tau triple, g0, tau, tau prime omega, tau double, h1, tau triple, g, tau triple, tau prime of omega, and now this is g0 because I've put it, the Dyson equation back in, so this g0 comes there, and then plus tau double up to tau four, uh, five, two more, three, four, five, 
to G0, tau to tau prime, or tau prime to tau. That must be a double. Tau double H1. Tau triple G0, tau triple tau 4 of omega tau 4 h1 tau 5 g0 tau 5 tau prime of omega plus etc. I propagate with the bare propagation, the Hamiltonian given by h0 I scatter, I propagate again, I scatter, I propagate, and I can either scatter zero time, one time, two time, three time, four time, etc. So I have to sum over all possible intermediate states and all possible amounts of scattering that I can have. Zero, one, two, three, four, five times, etc. Now instead of looking at this in equations, we can actually simplify our expressions by looking at pictures. And we can make a diagrammatic expansion. Where we now can draw pictures instead of equations out of Greek letters. And we say that our full propagator is given by a double line with an arrow going from quantum state tau prime to tau. Our bare propagator going from state tau prime to tau will be represented by a single line going from tau prime to tau. And then we have our scattering where we can scatter by the interacting Hamiltonian, H1, from the state tau prime to tau, and that we will indicate by a circle with the Hamiltonian in there, where you go from tau prime to tau. The Dyson equation then becomes, going from tau prime to tau is equal to the bare propagator from tau prime to tau plus the full propagator going from tau prime to tau triple, and then the interaction where tau triple scatters to tau double, and then we propagate to tau. And once we know how to translate our pictures to formulas, we can just multiply them together to get back to the original Dyson equation, where we now have the convention that we have to sum over all internal quantum numbers that we have in our diagrams. So everything that is not on the endpoints means we need to sum over all possible quantum numbers. What we do here actually relates to perturbation theory. What you see is that you have here zero intermediate or interacting Hamiltonians. Here you have something that is linear in the interacting Hamiltonian. Here you have something that is quadratic in the interacting Hamiltonian, etc. So that is much like a Taylor series in the interacting Hamiltonian or a perturbation series. That also means that these kind of series expansions have a convergence range. And that convergence range is not always given. So it can very well happen that these are series expansions outside the range of convergence. The good thing is that our Green's functions are analytical functions and that the range of convergence is not given by a divergence over the entire ring in the complex plane, but just by isolated poles. And that allows you to do analytical continuation, and thereby if you have an isolated pole, run around that pole, and still get a function that is not only valid inside the sphere up to the first pole, but also outside that sphere. 
Um, there are actually cases where um, the Dyson equation that we have here, where you have the full Green's function on the left and the right, is just solvable in terms of a quadratic equation where you can just solve for the full Green's function, which uh, we'll encounter as examples as well in the next lectures. So, if you truly just want to go through a series expansion like this and truncate at some point, then you have to be careful and realize that you have a convergence range and that you might well be outside that range of convergence. But if you have ways to sum up to infinite order and are able to do analytical continuation, where the analytical continuation is very often just very simple, it's just a statement that the analytical function that you find that is valid for small h1 because you have just isolated poles will also be valid for large h1s. Or if you're able to solve this without going to the infinite series, you're able to find results that are non-perturbative and valid for any size of interaction. And that is what this method, uh, what, what makes this method really powerful and very useful. So thank you very much for your attention. In the next lecture, we'll look at the example where we use all of this and we look at a single impurity in a lattice and calculate uh, the states and the deviations that you get because of the non-periodic impurity that we have in a single lattice. Stay healthy. We see each other later.